Ruby Volume 5 is the absolute worst volume of Ruby, is what most of you were probably thinking, I would say. Yeah, ever since this volume came out, the consensus seems to be that Volume 5 is the absolute worst volume of Ruby since the show started back in 2013. And while it is tempting to ride that bandwagon, you guys should know by now how unpopular some of my opinions are for not just Ruby, but other properties. I.e., I think Volume 3 is the best Ruby volume, I choose you as the second worst Pokemon movie, and that I actually liked you know his anime for the most part. So do I believe that Volume 5 is the worst volume of Ruby? Well, let's find out. So after Volume 4 concluded with Team Ranger arriving in Mistral via airship, the series' main plot revolves around the team training for the upcoming arrival of Salem's forces at Haven Academy in a month to wish to steal one of the four relics of the world of Remnant for themselves. Oh, and it's also revealed that Ospin is actually the guy who gave the four maidens their powers long ago and has since been reincarnated into several bodies over the centuries due to his failure to stop Salem, with Oscar being the newest body for him to inhabit because, um... He was a fan of Full Metal Alchemist? Okay, in all seriousness, it's explained that he can reincarnate in bodies with a similar mindset as his, but wouldn't that be a funnier condition for who he reincarnates as? But I digress. But while the main plot is going on, Yang and Weiss are off to Mistral as well, and Blake is dealing with the White Fang threat, before eventually the three reunite with Ruby and fight against Cinder, Emerald, Mercury, and Hazel for a bit before the Spring Maiden is revealed and the Relic is ultimately taken by our heroes for protection, ending Volume 5's story with Cinder being frozen, Adam turning into a whiny pissant, and Leo getting killed by Salem. So yeah, while it may have sounded like a lot happened, Happened, especially in comparison to volume 4 which was mainly just walking for most of its main plot it takes a long time to get there because the pacing is dragged out at points I know the other volumes have had their pacing issues but in this case it was bad enough for me to notice unlike the previous volumes which I didn't notice that much when watching Oh, uh, Ruby, you just killed Weiss because you moved my hands out of the way of her injury. Dumbass! For instance, the training lasts less than a single episode, and then we never see them train again. If anything, the fight at the Belladonna Mansion has more time given to it, and that's because it's over the course of three episodes, but that's because it's paced poorly, largely because... It keeps getting cut away for either exposition that goes on for too long at points, or scenes of her characters talking that is unrelated to the mansion fight. Hell, even the training itself is really short, almost like it doesn't fucking matter or something, because all Ruby is getting trained on is how to fight hand-to-hand. -hand. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be useful, like, against the grammar or a guy with a sword that could chop your hand off oh and you know it's not like Ruby has an ability inside her that could be worked on further instead of something she already uses to begin with oh what was that name again oh yeah the silver eyes you know the thing that you've barely used or developed since you introduced it in volume three just saying guys but the worst example of the pacing problems is the final fight in the main hall near the end of the volume note how I said main hall and not Raven versus Cinder because look at to why I didn't include that in a moment it takes four episodes to wrap that shit up and that's not because there's a lot going on but because there's a lot of talking dead air the characters just standing around during a fight scene or even worse ending fights off screen slash cutting out most of the fight are you for real there are other problems with the fight scenes in this season but i'll touch on that during the animation section for now let's just say that ruby volume 5 is the best example of how not to do fight scenes and you know what's worse they had a good example in this final stretch of episodes to use for this fight the fight with Cinder and Raven. In that fight, it's choreographed well, it's paced well, there are hardly any pauses, and what a shock, they show the entire fight. Did another freaking director handle this scene or something? Why wasn't this person involved in the other fight scenes this volume? They could have made them work. Or, wait, was it the same guy? Because if yes, why? You had a good fight scene here. You could have applied that to the other fight seasonally, so why not do that? Fuck. And while, well, yes, the story doesn't have a lot of plot holes and the story actually goes somewhere unlike Volume 4's main story, the pacing severely hurts the story because not only does it drag its feet at numerous points, but it's also guilty of going too fast sometimes, like the previously mentioned training. I'm not asking for either extreme of pacing here. All I'm asking for is, at minimum, a decent pace for your storytelling. But that's not the case here, and that sucks. I will say that it's better than Volume 4, my second least favorite volume of Ruby, but only because stuff actually happened in the main plot this time around. Character-wise... It's okay. I like the scenes with Weiss Yang and Blake since they either help develop the bonds between them or expand further on the characters, and I was glad to see Ruby get some form of development that wasn't development in strength. However, I felt that characters like Crow, Oscar, Nora, and Ren weren't that interesting as characters this time around, and I barely remember them as the volume went on, but 
I digress. Speaking of forgettable, I don't like Leo's character since he was really uninteresting and whiny. Hell, I didn't even care when Leon slaughtered him. I didn't like how Arthur Watts was used in this season since he only appeared a couple times in this time and he barely did anything. And I was rolling my eyes when Emerald and Mercury were on screen because most of the time they were on screen, they were just wasting time. Oh, and don't even get me started on Adam Taurus. Remember when he was a threat in Volume 3? Remember when he chopped off Yang's hand and decapitated Blake's shadow? Yeah, well now he is a whiny bitch who killed the former head of the White Fang because he wanted to be in charge, barely does anything as leader, gets thwarted easily, and gets his ass kicked by Blake with an attack from behind before running off. That doesn't make him threatening or an interesting bad guy when he's on screen. Er, this just pops into my head now. Oh, and as for Cinder, while I am disappointed that she isn't expanded that much further as a character, she wasn't a terrible character in this volume, and unlike Adam, they at least tried, keyword being tried, to keep her character from being a whiny bitch. But yeah, she was okay in this volume. Still though, she could work on her aim, it's like, OH NO, SHE HIT A SMALL PART OF THE KIDNEY, HUH. Then again, John, who was right behind Cinder, didn't think of maybe stabbing her from behind or something, so I guess stupid is contagious or something. As for everyone else, they were okay they serve their purpose in the story but didn't really keep my interest outside of that hell even raven despite the twist in the screen time was just okay to me as a character so in comparison to other volumes i'd say it's also slightly above volume 4. speaking of better than volume 4 the music was a lot better this time around i love the theme song for its lyrics instruments and composition a lot of the background music is better than volume 4 especially its composition and even the reprises slash vocals on aside from the previously mentioned intro song are a lot better than in volume 4. Ignite, Smile, the song All Things Must Die, even the credits are pretty good. So, yeah, well, I didn't like Volume's 4 soundtrack that much, Volume 5 is a big step up in terms of the music department, and good job to the sound team for that. I shame I'm not ending the review on a happy note, because to me, the worst part of Volume 5 is the fight scenes. Yes, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but this is one of the worst animated parts of the volume. Yes, outside of the fight scenes, the animation looks fine, but when the fight scenes are not slow and clunky, there's a lack of energy in the fight scenes for the most part, save for the random slash cinder fight. There's a lot more inconsistencies in the shots, i.e. a character landing in a location, and then in the next shot, cutting to a different part of the room or removing certain objects that should be there. And there are even scenes where basic filmmaking is thrown out the fucking window. I won't spend too much time on this since there's a video dissecting these fight scenes already, but in episode 12 where Crow is fighting Hazel, Oscar makes his comment about what Hazel is talking about, and they fuck up the scene by not only fucking up the arm Hazel used to block Crow's attack, but in the previous shot, Oscar was behind the two fighting, and based on the eye placement on Hazel and position of the two fighters, he would be talking to Oscar around the stairs section of the main hall or the pillars in front of Hazel, and as I just showcased, that is not Oscar's location. This is basic continuity, and they couldn't even get it right in this scene. Really, what should have happened in this scene would be something like this. Tell him what you did, Ospin. Don't play the side of card, bastard! I know you're in front of me! Layman and attacking him while he's distracted. As a result, all these issues make it really hard to follow the action scenes of points, and as said in the story section, the pacing of the fight scenes are also really bad for the most part. I know a lot of people seem to like the fights with Yang and the group of bandits as well as Blake and Ilya's fight, but I felt they too had some issues with the scene, structure, and pacing. I'll grant you not as bad as other fights in this volume, but I still found issues with it. And whether or not Ruby's supposed to be about actions or its fight scenes, it doesn't change my opinion that most of the fight scenes in Volume 5, and by extension all of Volume 4, are inferior to the fight scenes in the first three volumes. That being said, I do hope the Volume 6 will fix some of these issues because I still enjoy this show in the end. But, we'll find out later in the year when Volume 6 comes out if stuff like the fight scenes are improved or not, so I think I'll end it here. So to tie it back to my topic question, is Volume 5 the worst volume of Ruby? Honestly... No. Is it flawed? Oh, absolutely. The story has its issues, most of the fight scenes are bad, and the characters aren't as great as previous seasons, but I'd still argue that outside of the first volume, since the early works aren't as good as later works most of the time, the fourth volume to me is still the weakest volume because the main story sucked, the characters weren't that great when compared to previous seasons, the music wasn't as great, and it was just a boring ride from start to finish. And yes, volume four built up to a lot of stuff in volume five, that I still found Volume 4 a boring ride when watching it. So no, I don't consider Ruby Volume 5 to be its worst volume. I think the volume is just okay at best, but far from the worst one I've seen thus far. But at this point, the show should be getting better, not going in the opposite direction. So I really hope that Volume 6 will be an improvement over this and Volume 4. Until then, I'm David Grimm, and next time we meet, I'll be investigating the Hyperdimension to find the anime adaptation of Hyperdimension Neptunia. See you then. Greetings, David. Huh? Oh, hey, Toucher. It's been a while. What's up? Not much. Just getting adjusted to this new form. But that's not the main reason I'm here. 
I heard from my former guardian that she gave up your powers before. Could I explain why? Well, simply put, I realized I didn't need it anymore. Back then, I thought this was something I deserved. After the shit I went through in my past, I felt it was my fate. And it was only when I started to change things to you guys that I realized that was bullshit and that conditioning I put on myself faded over time. I could have destroyed the ring at any time in hindsight, but for the longest time, I didn't realize I could even do that. Fair enough. Well, I guess that's all I got. Since getting this one, I've been trying to live a normal life on my own, so I guess I should be coming. Actually, I need a break from this project, so how about you stay a little longer? I'm sure Greninja and Susan would like to talk to you as well. Uh, I guess I won't, Hat. By the way, what was that you were working on? Oh, I'm trying to give Greninja a human body since he complains about him being useless, but I can't seem to pull off the soul after deanimating the body without killing the soul. Oh, okay. I'm sure you'll find a way to make it work. Oh, uh, hopefully.